Hey, we never found 4B. Did I miss it somewhere? No, I gotta have, right? Oh, maybe we'll come back some other day to find it. But it's important, because we gotta know what happened. Mm, maybe we'll come across it later on. Okay. Oh. Oh. Hello. Can we get the cluster from here, maybe? Die already. Are you guys coming up? I don't want to go down there because the astral fugue is down there too. <laughs> Can you guys just kind of sort yourself out? Oh, I think I got the cluster though. They're not showing plus signs anymore. Ah. Uh. Ow. All right, we should be going down. Remember the whole thing about how we shouldn't be doing distance fighting. Oh, this is scary though, because my health is extraordinary. Wow. Whoops. Ah, that shouldn't have happened. I got a little bit too uncareful. How do I get out of here now? Do I keep going back this way? Oh. Oh! <gasps> 4B was right here! Oh, this is perfect! Thank you for killing me so I could find this. <laughs> we went in and met Polaris, like a star. She told us we were special. She made us special. It felt like being born or reborn. The world fading in for the first time. Familiar, but somehow different, said Jesse. Polaris told us how to turn off the projector. The dung monkeys and the knot mother were coming straight at us. Dylan was crying. I turned it off and they were gone. It was over. I took all the slides and burned them. All of them except hand. And from this, the Bureau learned that there is a paranatural entity called the Polaris. Remember how we were hesitating whether to tell Emily or not about Polaris? If she had access to these files, then she would have known that Polaris is a thing already. Although there's no information about who compiled this, so we don't really know what kind of level of access these files are. Huh. Okay, so now that we have everything. Basically, it began with maybe Jesse and Dylan finding a projector, and then they were kind of messing around with it, and they were friends with a boy named Neil. So they told him about it so that they could all play together. And part of why they did this was because Neil was being bullied by a bunch of other kids. Things went on okay for a little while. Jesse, Dylan, and Neil, they were having fun messing with the slides, but Neil in particular was messing around in the meadow slide a lot. And eventually, the bullies found out about the projector, and they locked Neil inside the meadow slide pretty much. Or at least at this point, that's what we thought. After that, the bullies took the slide projector for themselves, and they started hanging around in the other ones too, including the temple slide, which had some kind of a paranatural being, the Knot Mother, who was breastfeeding them, which was probably not doing good things for them because they ended up killing their math teacher, Mrs. Chester. And that was the point when the town realized that something was wrong. The adults started doing something about it. The remaining kids in Ordinary had to follow a curfew. Mom and Dad were pissed, asking us about the dump, about everything. I remember wanting them gone like Tom had said. When we woke up the next morning, pretty much all the adults had just... vanished. Oh, I kind of glossed over this earlier, but this is pretty concerning, right? Because it sort of implies that maybe Jessie thought about something she wanted, and that's how the thing happened. She thought, I don't want these adults here anymore. And the next morning, they were all gone. Is that related? Hmm, probably. Probably Polaris did something, is what it sounds like. Oh, hold on. Is 4.A chronologically before 3? Because the bullies were dragged away by the police in 3, but then in 4.A, 
Jesse and Dylan went to get the slide projector. And then at this point, we saw Neil show up, but he wasn't really human anymore. And then things started really escalating here because the projector wouldn't turn off, but Polaris is the one who taught us to do so. And then we ended up burning the slides to make sure that something like that wouldn't ever happen again. If this is in the right chronological order, then it actually seems like Polaris did not appear before the adults disappeared. Hmm. I guess it's a little bit fuzzy whether the powers that Jesse and Dylan have are innate or not. Because do they have these powers because of genetics? Or is it more that Polaris gave us these powers? Or maybe the slide projector? We were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or the right place at the right time. Depending on your perspective, I guess. Hmm. Wait, if we want to get out of here, is it best for us to just turn back and go to the fast travel marker? Oh, but there's a room that we haven't explored next to the turntable. Hmm, I guess we should go back and check that out. Oh, hey, there's something in the dump. Album cover. Oh, oh, old gods of Asgard. Rebirth, greatest hits. I was nine or something when I found my dad's old gods album. I became a huge fan instantly. It's so Alan Wake and Control are definitely in the same universe, but it's weird because Thomas Zane was someone that the psychiatrist couldn't find any information on. But the old gods of Asgard are? Okay, everyone's already gone. Good for me, I suppose. Where was that question mark room? Is it this one here, or...? Sterling AWE. Are we allowed to go in there? Uh, maybe if we turn the thing again, back to the position that it was before we came here? Can I press it again? I can't. Hmm, maybe that's a place that we come back later on then, because as far as I can see, it's the same situation as this one, where the gate doesn't really open until this thing gets turned. But is there a way for us to open that right now? Not that I can see. Okay. We'll come back another time then. And I guess we'll do a quick round down here just to see if there is anything we're missing. I don't think so though. It's just a circular area. And that's it. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's get out of here then. There is a fast travel point right here. So we don't have to walk back too far. If we want to go chase down the slide projector right now, then we should be going to research, but I think we should probably put that off for a little bit first. And do some side stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially because the anchor! I've been wanting to go to it for so long, but I still haven't gone back to it yet. Ground slam. Slam into the ground and damage nearby enemies. Heck yeah. Let's try that out. Ah, that's the thing that Mirror Jesse was doing to me. Okay, that's cool. That actually makes it so we get even closer to our enemies. Whoa! Oh! Okay, that wasn't smart. <laughs> I somehow managed to do that right next to a fuel tank or something. Ooh! Nearly died again. Okay. Why don't we go back to Executive? I don't think we have a mission there specifically, but it would be nice just to talk to everybody, and maybe even Dylan again. Hey everybody. What about the outfits? I don't know if we'll be wearing any of these permanently, but at the very minimum... Oh, whoa, this one's kind of pretty. That's the one the mirror Jesse, Asej, was wearing. 
No, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to be a prisoner in here. Ooh, golden suit. I look like a businesswoman. Very high class. Cool. Okay, you know what? It would be hilarious if we went to talk to Dylan in this outfit here. <laughs> oh my god. Gigantic P7 on the back there. I need the containment protocols for every altered item or object of power with an audio-related effect. I'll send a team to contact Langston and get that information, sir. If yes, why? What do we tell him? Tell him that the hiss worked through sound, so any countermeasures designed for similar altered items should be considered for field use. Oh, they're making some progress on the research here. Hiss works through sound. <laughs> oh. Lots of air <laughs> oh, I can't levitate here. That's what I was trying to do. Maybe because we don't want to scare people? Can we not levitate or do we just not want to levitate? Apparently the director restored HRA production. They're already getting other survivors out of safe rooms. Great. Maybe I can get back to my office soon. I miss having a door to close on people. I think you're gonna have to endure the inconvenience a little longer. It's easy for people to go insane here because we're all locked up. It's a big room, but we're still all locked up in the same place. Pope's promotion. Dr. Darling has personally recommended Ms. Pope for a promotion based on her work ethic and assistance in advancing many ongoing research matters. See research reports mm, for breakthroughs resulting from her work. Recommendation. According to her colleagues, Pope has displayed a keen eye for detail and a quick grasp of paranatural concepts. She is professional and diligent, though some of her co-workers complain of social disinterest. The review committee approves this recommendation and promotes Ms. Pope to the position of research specialist. From junior researcher. Outstanding performance. Wonderful. Does she have a higher rank than Underhill or the other way around, I wonder? Oh, we must have not been in this room before. I don't remember having seen it. Collective unconscious. Collective unconscious is defined as a form of the unconscious that is shared in all human minds. From this arises unconscious knowledge, linking us through our ancestral heritage. Through this collective unconscious, we unknowingly attribute a series of images and archetypes to all elements of our lives. These archetypes are never fixed, but shift and change in tandem with our species and culture. This internal belief in the power of images, shared by a massive population, is mm, in the creation of altered items and objects of power. Important? Paramount? The sheer amount of mm, mm exuded is attracted to the best representation of that image, imbuing a single object with massive amounts of mm. Altered item powers? Theoretically, places of power could likewise be formed by the simple power of sustained collective belief. Wow. That's a thought. Things are only the way they are because we believe them to be this way. In a way, for some things, probably yeah. Especially when you have a workplace like this. Just when I thought things were stabilizing, Marshall abandons us. I'm sick of no one telling us what's going on. Information's always been on a need to know basis. Well, I need to fucking know. I'm an upper level executive, damn it. <laughs> This guy's been freaking out the whole time, and the lady's been cool as a cucumber. Hmm. What was I saying just now? You have a workplace like this, with a lot of bright minds, but also people who are naturally susceptible to things like superstition, I feel like. Curiosity. Scientific curiosity. Let's call it that. God, I wish the executive bathroom hadn't shifted away. <laughs> So, if things really only appear because we believe they march through here, why the fuck didn't we put a bullet in that thing's head? I heard it's the director's brother. Would you shoot your brother? That's no one's brother anymore. He's the enemy, plain and simple. If you gather a bunch of people who are scientifically curious in a place where beliefs make things real, then is that making anything real? Oh you know my god. I heard some rangers saying he saved them in maintenance. They were attacked by a new kind of hiss, and Arish got them out. 
All right, but still, a security guard leading rangers? I don't know if I like taking orders from a mall cop. Yeah, well, he's the best we've got right now. Marshall's gone. Salvador is dead. This is Morgan Yu's office. Sticky note complained. Well, To whom it may concern, in case you are not aware, something caused a sticky note in my office to duplicate. My office is unusable now. <laughs> I will be working from home until this is resolved. You can reach me on my cell or home phone. Sincerely, Jay Bozer, Vice Chief of Staff. Oh, come on, is this really unworkable? It's not the best situation, but I feel like it's okay. <laughs> if only money duplicated like this. Goodness. We have to go back to all those places before? Like, for example, we could have opened this room a while ago, Marshall but I didn't realize. Just sit on our asses and then leaves? What's the deal? She must have her reasons. She's probably out doing some recon. Then she should have taken us with her. I need some action, goddammit. There's a lot of hotheads around here. Well, this guy never came back into work because the situation was never resolved. Which is probably better for him because now he's not caught up in this situation here. What the heck is a sound? Anyway, I'm here because I want to talk to Dylan <laughs> in the P7 outfit. Was there anything here that we hadn't seen before? I don't think so. Oh, look at that. Multiple clocks for multiple time zones? Just kidding, they all display the same thing. Hello? Oh, that's a radio. Okay, cool. Hey everybody. No, he still doesn't want to talk at all. What the heck? <laughs> that radio sound was so loud. Hey, he doesn't have P6 on his back? Is it because he's no longer a P6 candidate? One of the audio logs we had earlier said that Dylan is no longer a candidate. Now, is that because I'm the director? Or is that because he's been deemed unstable and not fit? Maybe both. Well, he doesn't want to talk to me, so there's not much for us here. Time for me to switch out of the outfit then. Of all these ones, the golden one is kind of like a... It's a nice alternative, but... The asynchronous suit is something I can actually see myself wearing a bit. Yeah. Just for the purposes of talking to people here, at least. Why don't we try this on? Hey, Arish. I can settle this job. Oh, where the f Man, I never thought I'd be working in the executive sector. Look at me now, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. I have to go. Me too. You're not the only one who's busy, you know. Nobody really has anything new to say to me because I haven't found the slide projector yet. Hello again. But not you, Emily, my beloved. Do you remember Mr. Tomasi, the head of communications? The hiss he was changed into showed up in containment oh my God. near the turntable. I'll take care of it. That thing's not getting away this time. I've heard reports about his particular use of language and intonation when repeating the his babbling. The biological and behavioral distinctions between different his corrupted individuals is truly fascinating. I wonder if I could categorize the data. And she's already off on her own thing. <laughs> Alright, I'll go check him out. I've been seeing these darling presentations all over. Seems like he enjoys the limelight. So you noticed, huh? 
when he recruited me out of college, he actually came to visit. He interrupted my physics course by shouting, uh, not quite, professor, and then marching down to the front of the class where he proceeded to berate the very idea of laws of thermodynamics. Hey, he's been a showboat all his life. Darling visited you in college? Yeah, he read a paper I'd published, came to recruit me for the bureau. I accepted and then wow. spent years waiting for access to the confidential research that Darling promised me. And whenever I ask about my access level, he just mumbles that it's temporarily postponed and then changes the subject to the effect of entropy on luck. I wonder who else Darling hid his work from. Marshall? Trench? Why though? We should all be on the same side. One thing about earlier when we were in the containment sector is that Dr. Darling made a note to specify where he took this light projector. So it definitely wasn't like, oh my god, I'm an evil bad guy and I'm gonna steal this stuff now and do bad things with it. He documented everything and he said specifically, okay, this is what I'm doing. So it's not like he doesn't want to be found or anything like that. The wording actually seemed like he would be there too, if we went to the Dimensional Research place. So that's definitely something to look forward to. Have you learned anything about Dylan's condition? Only that he's definitely his, but I guess his chanting made that pretty obvious. You know, interestingly, the words of the Hiss incantation have an average length of four letters. The most common word used seven times is want. The next most common are through and time. That's very interesting, don't you think? I don't care about the <coughs> words. What about my brother? Right. Sorry, I got a little off track. Well, strangely, his tissue samples all look healthy, unlike the other Hiss I've tested. That's good news. Right? Hmm. A lot of complicated feelings there. That Emily is not being very considerate of because she's all like, Oh my god, the hiss, I want to study it. But it's my brother, man. I wanted to talk to you about the crazy things I can do. My abilities. I get the sense that they're not very... usual around here. Well, usual and unusual aren't really benchmarks at the Bureau, but for some perspective, Director Northmore once used the floppy disk to send a bowling ball six yards through the air, and that was considered a huge deal. So compared to that, you are most certainly an outlier. I'm better than him. An outlier. I like the sound of that. Mm! Instead of hating yourself for the things that make you different, it's good to be proud of it. Own it. I should get going. Don't let me hold you up. All right, well, thank you, Emily. We can go back to Tomasi first, and maybe that's how we unlock that one room. Sterling AWE, was it? Timeline of events. To examine the invasion's timeline of events for possible patterns in his behavior. Establishing a timeline is difficult at present because of a lack of reliable communications between bureau sectors and staff. Preliminary models indicate ground zero of the invasion is located within the executive sector. Once it becomes possible to interview surviving personnel, pinpointing this exact location should be feasible. Other outstanding questions that a timeline may help answer. How did the Hiss get past the internal lockdown? How does the Hiss resonance advance through space? Deliberately or uniformly? What is their ultimate goal? The outside world? A cross-dimensional destination? Whatever's going on here, like, I kind of feel like I wouldn't be too surprised if... Well, of course it has to do with me. They're endangering us by bringing a hiss in. If Trench was still around, he'd have stopped this. Please. Trench was part of the same shadowy group that are responsible for every disaster this country's ever seen. Zachariah Trench was a national hero. Keep your conspiracy nonsense to yourself. We're kind of here under the impression that, oh, Jesse is gonna save the day by cleansing all the Hiss. But I honestly wouldn't be too surprised if I was part of why the Hiss are here to begin with. The Tennyson report was right. The Bureau is just another front for the shadow government. 
Invaders from the city beyond the quarry. <laughs> this lady's kind of a um, conspiracy theorist. All right. Well, we can go back to Tomasi right now. Why not? I feel pretty confident about facing him again because we have a lot more skills now than when we last saw him. So this should be fine, right? Let's hope so. This would be back in... Containment. Heck yeah. Hmm. So Tomasi is basically a his elevated. Unless if he's gotten some new moves since the last time I saw him, he shouldn't be too difficult. Oh! Hey, this is open now. I guess he must be in there. Hello? Have we learned about the Sterling AWE before? There's a giant rock in here. Ooh. It's my good old friend Tomasi with his floating skills and all. Shatter is probably not the best weapon here. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Getting friends to come with you? That's a bit of a cheating tactic, don't you think? Do you have any more friends? Yes, you do! Whoa! <gasps> I didn't even see what happened just now, oh my god. When Tomasi summons his lackeys, is it better for me to focus on him or the lackeys? Killing the lackeys will give me back some health, but to be honest, I don't feel like I'm too good with those bomb guys and the shield guys. So maybe it's better for me to just focus on you so I can get rid of you and end the fight entirely. Come on, buddy. Nope, nope, two can play at that game. I really gotta stop him when he does that because I can only take two shots and I'll die, pretty much. You know, if it's just you, it's so simple. But it's because you keep summoning your friends that make it annoying here. Ow! It's important for us to keep a thing on him too. Whoa! Like, we can't leave him alone for too long because his shield regenerates, and that's really not good for me. We also have to keep moving around so people aren't killing me when I'm not looking. Boom! We did it! Wow! I guess the Bureau should start looking for a new head of communications. Okay, sorry guys. This is actually not over yet because I still gotta deal with these people here. With one sliver of health. No! Not that guy! Not that guy! Would be really embarrassing if I beat Tomasi but die to a lackey here. Whoa! Shit! I'm so scared right now. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Ah! Oh my god! You've gotta be joking me. <laughs> god, I wasn't even paying attention to what Jesse said about Emily just now. I'm guessing she just said, Hey, I did it, so I should go back to talk to Emily about it. Are you guys still here? <laughs> Please get out. So this one took me a few tries. Not nearly as long as, say, the mold, but still quite annoying. And in the end, I had to try a variety of different mods, and what really did it for me was, I think, for the spin. Well, first of all, for personal mods, I switched it so that it's launch energy decreasing cost for 37%, which gave me like one extra shot before my energy ran out, so that was really nice. But the pivotal one here that I just tried, I think, would be this one. 
damage while low on health. As you can see, when I was low on health, when I had one sliver, I was doing a lot of damage. But, uh, not enough to save myself from being killed by the lackey. You see what I mean though? Because those guys, that guy with the annoying shield thing, the guy that looked like a peacock, he's my worst nightmare. Oh, I came back in here because I thought there were documents to pick up, but was this it? Huh. They were working on something here. So the Sterling AWE is not something we know too much about, and oh my god! <gasps> I just saw that. <laughs> you mean this whole time I could have used explosives on the guy? No. No. Well, it's over now, so it's okay. There is a document here. Sterling Summary. AWE-46, from 2016. A paranatural object appeared in a field outside the town of Sterling, Colorado, near a billboard advertising, mmm. No civilians were injured, though a family dog has been reported as missing since the event. Local authorities arrived on the scene and began issuing orders over a monitored line of communications using several word watchwords flagged by the Bureau, including mmm. Bureau agents from the regional office were dispatched and arrived two hours after local police. The situation was contained and analysis began. Bureau research staff arrived the next day and examined the object. After mm days of evaluation, the object was lifted into an enclosed truck with built-in black rock panels and relocated to Bureau headquarters via the subway transit system leading into the oldest house. Is it just a rock that we're looking at here? A rock came out of nowhere. It didn't do anything, nobody was harmed, except for a family dog who seems to have disappeared, but otherwise, that's it. Oh, well, it's not quite just a rock because it seems to be perfectly chiseled in some kind of shape, too. I guess that part's kind of concerning. Oh, that's right, we have an entire office here where we can probably learn a little bit more. Oh, why are you doing this to me again? See, that guy, I really hate that guy. Please die. Yes. Oh, it's the freaking... The cluster is so smart, it hides behind the pillar so I can't see it. Oh, it looks so ugly, holy crap. It's like a gargoyle. And of course, I would be the only person who tried so hard to kill it, even though I could have just killed the cluster first. <laughs> Die already. Thank you! I really hate you! God, it's so ugly, look at it! Oh my gosh. Oh, jeez. Girl just wants to go into the office to look at the documents. Why you gotta be like that? Oh. You're listening to America Overnight. Now in our 29th year, lifting the veil between fiction and reality. Thank you for staying off with us. I've been getting a lot of calls about this meteor in Sterling, Colorado. There are reports of a large spherical container that crash landed in a field outside town. Some government people reportedly took it away. Now, we happen to broadcast from Colorado, and Sterling isn't far. I drove down myself to check it out with members of the America Overnight team. I don't need to tell you, it wasn't long before we found pieces of metal debris scattered in a field. Listeners, this is yet another instance of an unidentified flying object, or UFO, entering our airspace and crashing. That the government took away the evidence under cover of darkness only compounds the fact that these are more than likely visitors from beyond our planet, or dare I say, solar system. Head on over to our website to see pictures of the spacecraft pieces we uncovered. 
And while you're doing that, our sponsors would like your ear. America Overnight, we'll be right back. It's funny you talk about this now, because I think it was just in the news maybe about a week ago, when NASA confirmed that like some leaked video from their place had a UFO in it. But they didn't call it a UFO, they called it... What did they call it again? UAP? Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, which is basically a UFO, but you know... They can't use a sci-fi term, they gotta make their own complicated acronym. That is a weapon mod, so let's see if we can't dismantle some of this stuff here and just get it out of the way. For example, this one. I really want more slots so that we can freaking put the stuff into our guns, but if we want to do that, then we would have to upgrade. Which we probably don't have enough energy to do so, or a source, or whatever that's called. Sterling Supplement Local witnesses report a bright flash in the field at approximately mm, no noise accompanied the light. Authorities had assumed the object fell from the sky, but our examination found the object actually manifested there, vaporizing the soil around it in an intense spherical mm -mm, which possibly explains the light seen from the town. The object is a hollow sphere made of a stone-like material. Structural analysis of the material does not mm -mm on record. The sphere has a broken portion, as if something mm, from the object. The object has been inactive since arriving at the bureau. The communications department officially stated to the press that the object was a small meteor, while also using the America Overnight program to mmm. See episode 92. Note, this AWE will be studied in the containment sector until the spherical object is deemed safe to be transferred to the investigation sector. So it seems like it did something before. It says it was inactive ever since arriving here, but even while it was active, did it really do anything? Maybe summoning all those things is part of what it does. Tomasi was certainly attracted to it. Well, well, well. We can get out of here now. I feel like- oh, hold on. We haven't checked this side yet, have we? There's at least one thing we can open here. I feel like it kind of gives me some small comfort that the ordinary AWE was not the only altered world event that they have a room dedicated to. Because it kind of shows that, hey, other events were pretty big too, not just the ordinary one. I think I just saw another thing up there, towards the very corner of the room. Even this room is just like the one back in Ordinary. Same layout. All for one rock. Thank you. Shield efficiency. I really like how Control, there's a lot of gameplay variations based on your personal playstyle and maybe certain bosses. Because I really do feel like after a bit of experimentation, if I didn't have that higher damage while low health mod, then this would have been a lot tougher for me. But hey, we did, and that's why it's great. Were there people waiting for me outside earlier, or did y'all go away? Alrighty. Fast way to travel. 